welcome to Face the Facts. It's good to have everybody here once again. You have Nick Face in the house. We have Tom Smith and Phil Healy. Welcome everybody. We're getting ready for the holiday time. So it's a very busy time of year for a lot of people. And there's a lot of things obviously going on with sports that we need to talk about and all. So let's dive right in. First of all, how is everybody doing? Hanging in there. I um, feel. I guess you didn't get the memo today. So. Uh oh, it's sports. Oh, everyone's got the their sh swag. Blue. Oh yeah. Your swag. <laughs> Blue day. Those Blue day. Uh, got I got red on me. I got red on my nose. Read up in your memos. Let's get pretty huh. soon. Pretty soon we'll have a face the facts. Uh, we'll f have a face the facts clothing line going. I don't need any more clothes. I'm all set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> more clothes. Going nude for me. For the needy right now. Ridiculous. I'm gonna be birthday suited uh, up. There was no Patriots game, obviously, as they're on the bye right now. So we will talk about them a little bit later in our show here today. I would like to start with the Bruins. I'm going to keep preaching the same things that I've said over and over in the past shows and all. I am very, very concerned on this Bruins team now. I'm very concerned. I This team is a shell of itself without Brad Marchand. Now he's out with the COVID watch. Same goes with Craig Smith. They lost badly last night. Four to one against Vegas. This team is going nowhere. I'm sorry to say it, they're going nowhere. Tom, what would you do if you had an opportunity to change something? What would you do? Because now, now all the cards are on the table, in my opinion. I I do any kind of change right now. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what they need. I, they need to figure it out. Is what they need to do. I don't. I don't even know. Like. I haven't really been able to watch them, so I don't. I don't really have any idea what where where they're lacking. I know goaltending obviously is a big one. Um, I don't I have mean, much faith right now in Swayman, and I really don't have any faith in in Allmark. So Rask returning is coming. It's coming, January first. I expect that roster move where he's back there, and they're going to have a decision to make on what they're going to do with Swayman or Allmark. I think Swayman probably goes down to get more reps. I really do. I think that's if I'm putting my Bruins executive hat on here. They got the big money deal that was made out for all Mark. It's a lot of money for a backup. I don't know if he's tradable. I don't know. But I think Rask is, is going to be that number one when he's here. A hundred percent. Maybe this rejuvenates the team. I don't know. What are I your hope, thoughts I mean, on yeah, what what are your thoughts on Cassidy? Is he safe? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I I, th I think he needs to figure something out in order to. I I just don't know if he knows how to work with the players that he's got in front of him right now. I mean, like you said, they're missing Marshawn, they're missing Craig Smith, and it's like, well, we can't really do anything without them so what what can we do it seems like is what it is i'm a cassidy fan i like what he's done but i do have to say there's one there's one caveat here with cap with um cassidy that really concerns me everywhere he's gone whether it was making his ways up to providence or getting his way up to the bruins he can't finish he can't get the championship he can't deliver what fans really want that end goal he can't achieve that end goal case in point 2019 against the blues that went slip sliding away so that was gone right there my other issue that i have with cassidy and it's hard to say because I, I think he's a likable guy i think I they like him in the locker room i think some of them i don't think he's toned anybody out per se but his style right now it's not sinking to some players that expectations should be better on some of these guys. The one thing I'll say before I start naming some names on the expectation level is young talent for whatever reason, offensively isn't getting the job done. So I'll use Carson Coleman as an example. I'll use Trent Frederick. I'll use uh, uh, Studnicka. All these guys, these names that, that that 
the media have told us are the next up and comings and should be really good and help with this team. They're giving you nothing, nothing. They don't have the physicality. They don't have the toughness. They're breaking down. You could also say they're not getting the chances when chances are, are sometimes slim and slim pickings here. So that's a concern of mine. I think defensively, you know, your McAvoy's and that young talent, I would say Cassidy's done a pretty nice job with the defensive core, you know, for some of these guys, at least some of them, at least. The other thing I, that I think definitely needs to be discussed here is removing of Martian from, penal, from serving suspensions and everything now, COVID and everything, he's out from that. You take him away from this team, they're horrible. They're horrible. And that's a big concern because you paid big money for Taylor Hall. He's done nothing. Nothing. Is Krejci, did Krejci really impact that? You could make an argument on that. You can make an argument, definitely. But time's a ticking here. This team is cedaring around a 500 team. And I think a lot of fans around here, myself included here, pretty fed up with the Boston Bruins. Pretty fed up. They're the big, they're the big teasers of this area. They're the big tease. They suck you in, and then they crap their pants, basically, and you don't get really anything else in return from it. So I would change things up. I would drastically change this team. And the one player I have not mentioned his name, and Tom, I'm sure you know who I'm going to go chirp on right now. I mentioned Hall, but I didn't mention somebody else. Whose name have I not mentioned? Charlie Coyle. That could be one. There's another name, a bigger name than that, that I haven't mentioned. Anson Carter. David Postenock. Carter. No, not Anson Carter. Say it again, Tom. Postenock or Bergeron. Postenock. Yeah. I know for a fact what's going to happen if they do part with Pasternak. I think, Tom, you know it. I think, Phil, even, even from just listening to us and understanding hockey a little bit from educating and everything from the games, if Pasternak goes to another team, probably a top five hockey player in the, in the NHL. And that's what scares me. You're going to get the Sagan. You're going to get the Sagan again. So that leads me to believe that there is something organizational wise is coaching, whatever it is that I feel that's where the change has to come from right now, because they're not getting enough out of players who are supposed to be impactful hockey players. So do you make a big move? Do you fire Cassidy? Do you lay a fire under them and say, you know what guys, enough is enough. You guys have been absolutely I don't want to say pitiful, but you've been very mediocre to this this beginning's part of this season. We need to change things up. Instead of trading players away and all that, that's why I think you're going to see a scapegoat move and Cassidy's going to be out of here before the trade deadline. Yep. I also I also think another Wow, issue really? Is- Sorry. Mm-hmm. No, that sounds crazy. Hey, I'm a crazy kind of person. I think big picture sometimes, you know? Sometimes you got to think that way. I, I think I think the other issue is 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 and it's it's been down the line, coaching line and it's not just one coach it's been I guess it's the organization I think they're too scared to switch the lineups around and move the lines around and move the defensive pairings around just to just to see if something else would work and I think that's part of the problem. Okay, I like your point right there because I didn't talk about that yet. You change line one and two up a bit. What do you do? All of them. I mix them all up. Okay. So does that mean Bergeron and Marshan are split, or do you keep them together and put somebody else with them? I, I would split them. I up. would split everything I would, if, I, if I tell you the truth. I, I would. I would even put. I would even. Put, I wouldn't even be opposed to putting Bergeron on the fourth line. Yep. Get him with like. A couple nitty gritty winning wingers to get something else going. I don't. Yep. So you know? I'm, I'm kind of like what I said at the beginning. My all my cards are on the table there. Whatever they got to do to figure it out. I know Marshan's your number one player, hundred percent. There's no denying it. There's no questioning it. That's it. 
You got to put him one. Who is he paired with? That's the question. I may think about when uh, COVID comes away from Kirk Smith. Let me bump him up to line one. See what he does yeah. with somebody else. Pasta, I, I delegate him at, at least first to the third or fourth line. I've had enough. I've had enough. I'd put, I'd put Pasta on the line with Hall. He needs That's a kick in I his ass. Do. I'm sorry. He needs a kick in his ass. Well, I don't mean to be hot shot. He needs but... I think he needs to be on a line with players that can actually keep up with him. And I think we talked about I thought I mentioned it last week. I don't think Marshawn and Bergeron, well, especially Bergeron, can keep up with Pasano. Uh I think he's just too too young for them and too quick. And I think he needs to be on a line with somebody else that has more speed. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think, you know. Craig Smith and Marshawn as wingers. I don't know who you'd put as their center. Uh, um, Hall and Pasternak as another two wingers. Maybe Felino winging Bergeron on the third or fourth line or something. I don't know. They just need to do something. They need to figure something out. They need to switch it up. Because the same old same old strategy hasn't been working for them. So. Yep. So some, something's got to give from that. Something's got to give. So I, I would, I would do whatever we can to, to mix things up here and make it a different kind of, uh, kind of thing, you know, for this team. Yeah, I agree. So we'll see, we'll see what happens from that. Um, let's jump over to the uh, Celtics and talk with Phil on how things are going from there. Um, we talked about it a little bit from last time. Um, I know that it's kind of in status quo. They just put off their Western conference trip and everything going on. What did you say? If anything? Well, no, you're missing an important element there. And I'm, I'm glad you, you're telling the tone of your voice is like, let's just slum it. Let's see. Let's go Celtics time. Let's do it. Yep. Um, but no, they had a really impressive win against uh, the, uh, the NBA champs against the yep. Milwaukee Bucks on Monday night. And they actually don't play again until Friday, which I'm like, ugh. It's like a Bruins schedule going on, which I imagine Bruins are trying to cram in as many games as they can. So I guess I feel your pain, gentlemen. Yeah. You know, their West Coast trip was kind of, I think it was one in four. And they had a chance to take maybe two or three of those games, but it was kind of, it was poor showing. And uh, Ume Adoko or, uh, had, and I apologize if I constantly mispronounce his name, <laughs> I probably will throughout the tenure of his coaching career because uh, I am kind of a fool. Yeah. But he uh, he uh, put together like a hundred a string of a hundred plays for them to look over a film uh, after their road trip, I believe on Sunday or Monday morning or whatever, and just got in their faces and got in, told them this is not good. Like you have to barrel through people, and this is actually I'm glad he said it like this because this is all I've been thinking of too. Like they need to be they needed to be physical and just move people out of the way sometimes because it just seemed like what was it? Larry uh, Larry Bird had a great. I used to watch this thing, uh, uh, Larry Legend, as a kid. I had the VHS, and I remember him talking about game, like, three or four. I forget what game it was. Maybe, like, four or five. No, I think it was, like, three or four. About the Lakers series, 1984, in the finals. And how he talked about how Magic and Worthy just kind of, and the rest of the Lakers just ran on him. And and they were high-fiving everybody. And he's like, it, he said it sickened him that he just saw those people high-fiving each other. I'm like, oh. He's calling people out to just kind of get get kind of you know muscle those people out or get kind of not dirty but just you know get rough You're like you can't you know you can't celebrate you can't like just run us down we're gonna be a roadblock at least and Ume is just trying to just trying to get through the heads like you need to plow through people you need to be a force and just like you can't let these people just do this to you and it showed they they passed better they played better defense on both sides of the ball they were. They were kind of crazy. And you know what? I And the stat that got me was, uh, and one of your favorite guys, Marcus Smart, 11 assists. And he, I think he only attempted a couple of shots. And yeah, it was kind of crazy. It's like, yeah, that's what he's, he can distribute. He can be that guy. Um, but yeah, they played, played great. But the West Coast trip, like, I mean, I think they won, I think they beat Portland, uh, Damian Lillard list Portland. They lost to Utah the first night by like maybe like 10 or seven. And they were in that game in the fourth, like with five minutes ago. They lost to, uh, what was the game after that? 
Ooh, I forget. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, they lost to uh, both LA, the Clippers and uh, the Lakers. I think the Lakers, uh, they could have made it a game, but they didn't. They lost by like 15 or something. And the Clippers, they were down like 20 and they came crawling back and they were down by three and uh, they could have tied it and went into overtime on a last second shot by Tatum at a three, at the three point line. But that, you know, fell short. And then the last leg of that trip was, I believe, Phoenix without Devin Booker. And they kind of didn't take him apart. I mean, they they won and the Suns won handedly, but it was a game at one point. But it's just, yeah, they didn't have a good West Coast trip. And you're looking at a 500 team right now, but if they start winning like they did in, in, in Milwaukee and they, they show actual signs of progress, like if in like two weeks we're talking about like an eight-game winning a streak or like they go like seven and two and or like you know two or three weeks you're talking about like a 10 and three record and then you really see significant change on both sides of the ball then i think you have the season because i think this team is more talented than we've been seeing and they can go toe-to-toe they can go toe-to-toe with a lot of people they just need to give a crap <laughs> they just need to care and they need to rebound the damn ball I'd like to give a crap on the Celtics myself too. Well, give a crap for it. Not on, not on them, not on them, but for them. I'll watch you the can. Santa Claus to the 500th repeat right now before I get my attention. Which one? That. The Jack yeah, Frost one is the third I one, I think. Like that right now. Um, no, it's not that I don't. It, I, listen, I'm, I'm I, sorry. I'm always going to be a fair weather fan of them until no, they, Nick, they, you know, they show it. My, my approach, I mean, especially after COVID and everything with all of these teams, you know, I love sports and everything, but and I know this is what this show is and everything we talk about and everything, but I got to tell you sometimes I've realized more and more that it's just a sport. It's not the end of life on stuff anymore. Yeah. You know, I've kind of feel a little spoiled in a bigger way. thing championship out of Celtics. We get a ruins one in 2011, the Red Sox and the Patriots. It's great to see them win. I, I thoroughly enjoy the football, you know, Patriots and Red Sox are my passion. Same goes with a little bit with the Bruins, but they, they just don't have that player that I need to feel like I got to watch every night when they're out there. I don't know how you feel Tom on it. I still, I'm still, I'm not convinced Tatum and Brown still are, are the, are the big guys here for the Celtics. I'm just not. Yeah. I just, I don't, I don't find basketball very entertaining. I know I've stated that numerous times across you know, the air time that I've had on the show, but I, I, I just, I can't, I don't think I'll ever be able to get into basketball, you know, as, as I am into hockey. So I don't it's know. Not, it's not for everybody. Same like for me. I mean, I was big baseball. A lot of people say baseball is boring. Why would you sit and watch that? It's because I played it. That's why I enjoy it. You know, if you played something and you had your passions towards something, that's where everybody's interests are able to come all, the, you know, they're all over the place because you have all different sorts of things that you enjoy on, on uh, sports levels and everything. Um, I do want to go to the Patriots next because they're coming off that buy. They're coming off that. I don't even want to say thrilling. They came off their win against Buffalo that, that cold windy mess that was of Monday night. And now we have a Saturday night game. We have a Saturday night this week. It's against the Colts. And I still feel pretty confident with the direction again, this team is headed. I think that, that they can absolutely win against the Colts here and continue on this path. Right now, I have a good chance of being 10 and four after Saturday. What are our thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think the culture, but I also think that the defense is going to shut shut a lot of the, the offense down. Um, and I think I think the Patriots are going to come out on top, but it's I think it's going to be a game, and it's going to be one of those games to definitely keep an eye on for sure. Billy, any take on them, on the Patriots? Yeah, no, I think it's very possible it could be a tighter game, but I think I'm with Tom and you. I think the Pats can handle it, and I think it would be a good road test. This team has been pretty good on the road. I think were they – are they like 5-0 and oh or 6-0? and oh? they're, I think they're like 6-0, and oh, which is kind of insane, and with a rookie quarterback. I remember, like, they didn't really win at home at the beginning of the year, which was kind of baffled me a little bit. But, yeah, this is I, – I think I think they continue their – you'll get a good game out of it, I'm sure. And uh, we'll see because uh, Indianapolis is a balanced attack. So we'll see see how it goes. I, I, I think they can pull it off. And I, I'm kind of with you. I think they can run the table. But 
It's. I think the Buffalo game is going to be tough. I don't know if you watch them. I get the day Tampa. after Christmas. Yeah, the day after yeah. Christmas is going to be a tough one. It's going to be a whole different kind of game than it was that Monday night. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Of course, pending and everything. Yeah. The good thing on the Patriots side is that they are at Gillette. I know this has been. It's, it was shaky at the beginning of the season when they were, you know, playing at home. But that's a big, big, big game. You know, and Buffalo just lost this past weekend in a thrilling game, by the way, against a very Tampa. great game. A lot yeah. closer than I expected there. 38 35. Uh, Brady gets the uh, overtime game winning touchdown pass. And it was a, a back and forth balanced game. But I think that pretty much sealed the deal there with Buffalo. And also, you could, I mean, if you actually watch the end of that game, I caught some of the highlights at the end. You could say that the referees kind of gave, uh, uh, gave Tampa. A couple of choice calls that kind of made uh, – yeah, I, I think uh, – oh, you, why? Ref. Do you feel the same? Oh, yeah, thanks for – no. Uh, Mo, yeah, but I, I feel the same. Yeah, I felt Yeah, the same. no, it's crazy. And I felt like – you feel bad for Buffalo because they climbed back. They climbed yeah. back in that thing. Yeah, they like, really nailed that out. I was getting – I was sweating it a little bit right there. Hmm. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, mention before we um, get into our annual thing we do about, you know, Christmas gifts that we would give a team and everything. We usually do this every year. I do want to ask you guys if you have seen the new Brady documentary that's yep. come out on Hulu. I've been watching it. Tom and I were talking I, about it. They did a phenomenal job on it. The Man yep. in the Arena, is that it? The Man yeah, in the Arena. Yeah. It's so on Hulu? That, Can you watch it on, on Hulu? Hulu. Yeah. Oh, okay. ESPN Plus Hulu, yep. Okay. So it's, uh, I, I feel it's definitely worth the time and effort. It's about an hour long each episode, but it kind of documents the first Super Bowl – then the next two, they're all in like parts. So I think yeah. we're up to what part five. I think yeah. part five right now is that after the Giants loss and where things, you know, flew under under um, the first Giants loss kind of era. Yeah. So I think it's a ten part series. Don't quote me on it. That's a lot. <laughs> that Don't is quote a lot. It, but if you haven't it's... got a chance to watch it, very, very great job they did. A really great job they did with. You know, they have Wes Welker, they have Michael Strahan, they had um, Randy, Moss. Randy Moss, they've had Mike Vrabel. I saw a couple cuts yeah, from Vrabel, Vrabel was, which is great. They had just a couple others from way back in um, the Willie old McGinnis. Lawyer Malloy. Oh, Lawyer Malloy. Oh, Lawyer good. Malloy was a part of it. That's right. Ty Law, I believe, was too. Oh, yeah. uh, Rodney Harrison. That's the other big name I knew. He's one of my favorites, too. Yeah part of it so mm. it's really cool to watch and sit down brewski brewski too a part of it so it's really cool to sit down and watch that all right our annual thing that we do during the holiday time i don't know if we'll have another episode next time before on um, christmas and everything gets here but what we like to do is we like to pick all four of our teams figure out what you would get do for a gift for each team to whether improve or get ready for um maybe during, something in season that they need so I want to go around. Let's gotta let's do the Red Sox first. They didn't get any love here today because baseball is still in lockout. So there you go for baseball. It's an easy one. It's an easy one. Now let's go to Tom. What would you do for a gift? What do the Red Sox get? An above three hundred batting average for JBJ. Oh, that's a lot. That's not a gift. That's a miracle, my friend. That's not a gift. <laughs> It that's an act be. of God. Yeah. That's a, that's a real, that's a real stretch of a gift right there. It's yeah. an act of God. Like, like Bill just said, that was very, yeah. Can't believe he's still here. Truthfully. I cannot believe he's still here. <laughs> I forgot. He's uh, actually Phil, living here uh, to the Red Sox. I would uh, honestly, uh, in all practicality, uh, a season <laughs> like minus what the team needs, like the MLB and the players union to get their you know stuff together. But if I want to give the actual Red Sox um, a gift, uh, uh, bona fide closer. I think that would be, like yeah. Right here. Um, yeah. no, I don't know who's out there in the market, but I would agree. The bullpen, I mean, if we go into the season with Matt Barnes, if there is a season again next year, uh, just I'm gonna put it, just, just I'm dying. I won't even, well, don't even bother. Don't even bother. I'll give hey, the two of your favorite, two of your favorite MVs. Give them the Celtics treatment. On the team. The Celtics treatment. Yep, 100%. Uh, my gift. I would trade Dahlbeck, trade Dr Jackie Bradley, trade Matt Barnes, trade Vasquez for a bag of baseballs and use them in season 
and put their little name on and everything, you know, right there, sign each name on that ball and have the pitchers spit on it <laughs> and have the hitters get a nice spitball arriving. <laughs> That's what I would do. No, in oh all God. serious, <laughs> in all seriousness. I think I would add another starting pitcher caliber person that is, is an anchor. I think Tom's lost it. Um, that would be an anchor of that rotation. I still feel, you know, we lost Erod. Oh boy, we need a replacement for that baby diaper. So anything that's not Charmin soft, a Charmin soft is happy. I'm happy with that. There you go. There's the right. I could use some baby diapers. Feel the love in this room for the Red Sox. Um, let's go to the Bruins next. Um, I would get a stick and I would go and run after Pasternak until he learned how to be a superstar, a superstar style hockey player. So, what I mean by that, he needs to figure out how to get to the point of being a leader and taking the bull by the horns getting the puck in the net and delivering that's what i would that's what i would do for the bruins uh tom what would you do uh a healthy tuka rask Ooh, i like that one i like that one a lot i like that we're putting a lot of faith in tuka here we're showing the tuka love better show it back oh yeah it's tuka yeah. Phil, uh, uh, is your gift that Tom and I don't talk about the Bruins the rest of the show? <laughs> no, mine would be you talk more about it so I can get some rest. There you go. So, but uh, no, I my gift was actually more or less Tom's, like a goalie, a healthy goalie, healthy a functional goalie. goalie. The puck stops with that goalie. Yeah, I would agree. They need that. They need somebody who can be 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 like a be like a wall that's there. That's a, some a stopper. I'll go to the Celtics, Phil Celtics. This will be interesting to hear what Phil would say to this. Uh, I'll give you two. Uh, ball handling and uh, just the ability to continue to pass the ball. Okay. Ball handling. And nothing nothing deviant about ball handling, no matter what kind of thing I'm doing. Family-friendly show here now. Family I'm just friendly. saying, if you're a, a globetrotter, then you got two in your hand, and then you're spinning them. You're just bouncing them and just hitting them like that. I don't know why they'd be <laughs> humongous like that right in front of me, but that's how it is. Um, but no, I I will say that, no, because JB, uh, sorry, uh, Jalen Brown often goes to, I love him to death, but I so many times I've seen Jalen Brown like make a great move to the basket, then the ball just kind of flips up somewhere. I'm like, what happened? Like, did he hit like a weird like spring in the uh, on the court? So, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, ball handling and... Um, passing better so one and a half gifts what's tom's gift to the celtics when do you hear mine i'm saving mine for last uh a new head coach oh you and what? i are on the same planet. Wow. wow i don't know about that yeah that's you guys the the leash is short yep <laughs> what's basketball i don't know <laughs> <laughs> have you seen a basketball tom no, like, I, know. <laughs> I don't know how to handle basketball. <laughs> Is this it? A little basket right over there. I'm, I'm going coach, but you know what I'm going to do? I am going to give Kevin Garnett anything he wants to be the Celtics' next head coach. That oh, wow. gets me to watch him again. Just him with swagger, like 10 different oh, rings. Come, Phil, come on. You, wouldn't, you would love that. Yeah, of course. I would love uh, if he's part of the organization. I don't I'll know. I'd take Paul Pierce. Him and his strippers can sit right behind the bench, and they can have a grand old it's, it's time. It's a total Instagram. I would watch total every story. ounce of that game. Talk about entertainment. And I know oh. we, we've been on this family-friendly sure, sure. path there, but you want to get the Celtics back relevancy? Rate them R. Rate it R. Put them all uh -huh. out there. Well, no one talks about this, Nick, about that everything. incident. No one talks about that incident with Paul Pierce and the fact that he gave those – women at least five hours of work and more oh. as it went they got oh, at least that they basically one of the got, most beautiful things you've ever seen it was just the weirdest it was a classic example of like you know i'm in a, i'm 39 so i mean like it's a classic example of someone who's either my age or older like how do i work instagram and just like how do i do this thing yep. and it's just like oh no one no one will ever see this 
but it's it also like yeah no no other basketball players ever hung out with i will tell you one with thing dancers. he did that he brought new meaning to the term the truth okay <laughs> i mean i'll look for it but no, i get it i know there's a joke in there somewhere but we'll find it um his nickname was the truth i don't know i, what, I know no oh, he, 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 he speaks the truth all right i'll tell you that we'll leave it at that oh, yeah, last yeah, thing yeah. we'll say for the patriots I might not be have any gifts they need under that Christmas tree this year. Oh, I think, we'll yeah, see. I think there is. It might not be. So what is it? I think a Mac attack, a Mac air attack. Like, I think he can do it, but I just, you need to see it. We need to see that Mac air attack. Yep. And cold weather too. So we'll, we'll see. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say a strong playoff performance and a Super Bowl win. Bucks, Patriots. That's what I'd love. That would be sweet. Oh, there you go. That would be sweet. That'd be fantastic. Very, very well could happen. We talked about it on our previous program. Very, very well Thank good. So, well, we hope we injected enough humor into you. No, we have not been sipping the eggnog early enough here or early on here, but we hope that everybody has a wonderful Merry, Merry Christmas in case we don't see all of you here again. Happy holidays to those that uh, don't celebrate Christmas and all. We keep it like that. And uh, we will see you again next time for another episode of Face the Facts. See you later.